Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and this is the famous, infamous Aperture 300D. We're not talking about this light as much today because we have this thing in the house, which is the brand new Falcon Eyes BL30 TD. So what's the story on this, and why is it next to the 300D? Well, this light is essentially a 300D that's by color. So Falcon Eyes recently reached out and wondered if I wanted to check this light out. Of course, I was incredibly curious because I was wondering if this by color light could keep up with the 300D, which obviously has been very popular for Aperture. So no strings attached with this one. So instead of just reviewing the light, I really wanted to compare it. So to start things off, let's jump in straight away with price. The Aperture 300D is around $1,100, sometimes $1,000 on Amazon and B&H. I'll have links to all these lights and everything I talk about in the description for those interested. And this guy over here, the BL30TD, is $800. So it's two to $300 cheaper. And we're gonna see, you know, what corners were potentially cut in getting that price to 800 bucks. So out of the gate, this guy's doing pretty good with that lower price. The next thing I tested, really the one thing I was most interested in was output. Can this thing at bicolor keep up with the 300D? So the 300D is a daylight balance light. That's all you get. This guy over here, the BL30, has a bicolor range of 3000 Kelvin up to 8 thousand Kelvin. So lots of different color options, which is phenomenal. When it comes to output, I measured both these lights at daylight. Again, this light can't do anything other than that. And then this one, I set it to 5,600 Kelvin. And I measured both lights at one meter with my spectrometer from Sekonic. It's an amazing tool. That's one of the most accurate meters out there for this kind of stuff. And what I found was pretty interesting. When you have the reflectors that come with the lights independently, the BL30 was actually brighter than the Aperture 300D by just a little bit and you can see those numbers here measured in lux to see that in a real world environment i threw the light on a stand and just pointed at myself this is not recommended because this will almost blind you both of these are incredibly bright lights pointed at myself and when we flip back and forth you can see the exposure difference on each of those shots i know that's not very realistic so i went ahead and used the aperture light dome on both lights both lights do have a bones mount which is awesome and uh, the results were a little different. The 300D was slightly brighter than the BL30. And I think the reason for this is the beam angle on these lights when using a Bowen softbox is a little different. So I think the 300D was more punchy in the middle of the softbox versus this guy over here. But the point is they're pretty much the same at daylight. And how can that be? Because this light, if you actually look at the diodes, you'll notice that there are 50% cool and 50% warm little strips of LED diodes, really, really small ones. And so what's going on here is because there's 8,000 to 3,000 right in the middle, you've got 56. So max output on this is going to be right at 5,600 Kelvin. And then you will see the output drop when you go to the warm end or the cool end. As you can see here, me just running through the different color modes, you'll notice it dim on either end. So at this point in my testing, I was really excited about this light because we have 300D level output but it's by color, which is awesome. And things get better and worse from there. Let's talk about color next. My 300D had around 96 CRI, and this one was around 95, so very similar. Both are gonna do plenty good for almost any scenario. So that's at 5600 daylight. I also took the BL30 and set it to 3200 for those that will be using it in a tungsten environment and also got really good CRI ratings of over 95. And the output, even though it dips at that cooler and warmer extreme of this light, it was still outperforming the original aperture 120D, you can see those readings here. So you're going to do really well on this light when it comes to output at pretty much any color. So with output and color out of the way, let's talk about usability, build quality on these two and how they're different. Now, I will say out of the gate, as you can see, they're very similar. So I think Falcon Eyes may have taken a couple notes looking at the aperture lights. There are some pretty big differences though. But first, some similarities. Both these lights have a yoke system and both have a Bowens mount. The Bowens mount has had zero issues on either light. 
Although the yoke on this light was struggling a little bit with the aperture light dome, I actually couldn't lock it in place. It kept wanting to tilt down. So I removed the little rubber washers on the yoke and that helped a lot. So pro tip, if you're going to be getting this light, take those washers out and that'll help with big soft boxes on the front. Another similarity between these two lights is how they work with controllers. The controllers are both separate from the head. So on the 300D, you've got this just absolute monster of a controller, two V mounts on the back, really long and tall. And then you also have a power supply. So you have to connect all this together with cables and then to the wall and then to the light. So it's a lot of cables. It's two very awkward things that you have to find a home for. Aperture, external, everything, and they're two different units you have to use unless you go with battery power. When it comes to the BL30, things are similar, but with a twist. Here is the controller for this light. First thing you'll notice is it is huge. Uh, it's pretty thick and it has, you know, all the controls on it here, a bunch of buttons and dials, inputs and outputs, but it combines the controller with the power supply. This is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because there's just this thing to connect to the light. Everything is here when it comes to your controls and you just run one cable to the wall and one cable to the light. And if you're using batteries on this, there are V mounts on either side and you don't have to run that cable. So at that point, you're only dealing with a single cable between the light and the controller. The bad news is if you are going to be using batteries, you still have to deal with all this weight. On the aperture setup, you can completely ditch that huge power supply and just use that thin, tall controller. On this unit in particular, we've got two knobs, one for output, one for color, and then there's also a touch pad to be able to change those values. And we also have channels on this, so you can connect several of these together. And with a single controller, you can change the output and the color, which is pretty sweet. Honestly, I actually really like this. It reminds me of a small version of one of those Joker controllers. So those who've used Joker 400s and 800s, that external box you connect to it is similar to this, except this is much smaller and much lighter. On the top, there's a big old honking switch for you to turn it on and off, as well as being able to switch uh, between wall power and battery power. This also has DMX, so you can connect all these lights together, use a DMX controller wired or wirelessly, pretty sweet. This thing is made very, very well, and it has rubber feet everywhere. So um, you don't have to worry about it damaging stuff. You can set it down like this. You can lay it down like this. Uh, I actually really dig it. It is pretty heavy though. And unfortunately, the cable length on this thing is ridiculously short. So when you're going from the controller to the light fixture itself, you're actually not gonna be able to get the light more than maybe six feet off the ground if you have this thing on the floor or on the ground. And uh, if you wanna boom the light up, you're gonna have to hang this whole thing on your stand. And it's a little heavy for that, especially if you're going to be using batteries on this. That said, I did find an extension cable on Amazon, but it will set you back 40 bucks. So keep that in mind if you're going to pick this light up. So that's a huge difference and similarity at the same time. External controllers and uh, this one is all combined, whereas the aperture one is two separate units. And that brings me to fan noise. All of these large chip LED lights need serious cooling, and usually they have a huge heat sink as well as a fan. So both of these lights have fans in the heads and in the controllers. But what's interesting is on the aperture one, the fans on the head are almost completely silent. So you really don't have to worry about sound there. But on the power supply for the 300D, there are some fans that get pretty loud. But when it comes to the BL30, things are completely flipped. The fan inside of the head is actually semi loud. It's actually quieter than the aperture's power supply, but it is, you know, audible. And then on the controller, we have no sound at all. There are fans in here, but you can't hear them. So very, very interesting. The takeaway here is that if you're going to have this light hooked up to the wall with power and you have the power supply in the same room, you're going to hear it and it's gonna be louder than this whole system. Whereas this guy, the head is always going to be semi loud. I will say, however, that for most shooting environments and scenarios, you're really not gonna notice. You know, if you have the light right next to a microphone, that's probably going to be a problem. But for the most part, your microphone is a little further away from your light, so you shouldn't have any issues there. So let's get down to the brass tacks, the final thoughts when it comes to the BL30TD. 
I would say it is on paper a slam dunk. It has bi color, it's as bright as the 300D. The color is pretty much on par, and I actually like the controller. Some of you might not, though. Uh, but I will say that the build quality isn't quite there. So if you're looking for something really rugged that you're going to be beaten up on the road, I think the 300D is going to hold up longer over time. I also know that Aperture has a really good history of their fixtures lasting a long time. I have several of their different lights and I use them constantly, especially their 120D line. Whereas this guy, it's new to me. So, you know, I can't really tell you what it's been like to use for five years. So we'll have to wait and see, but I have a feeling it's gonna hold up pretty well. The body is pretty much completely metal. This controller is gonna last a nuclear winter, which is really great. Um, so you got that to factor in. And of course there's price, $1,000, $1,100 versus $800. So I would say the Aperture 300D is gonna work great for you, but if you need that color and still want that output at daylight, this one's gonna be hard to beat. It's up to you, obviously, as to which one is gonna work best. Hopefully this video is giving you enough information to make that choice. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to help you guys out there. That's gonna wrap up this video and we're almost done with 2018, which is wild to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you in the next video.